checking the connection. Let's see. Hello, everybody. Are we going out on the airways here? Yes. Hello. Hello. Welcome, everybody. Hello. Hello, Barbara. Can you hear me? Okay. Waving. Great. Hello. Hello, Teresa. Hello, Long Island. Uh, Barbara, where are you in Long Island? Did we, did we already establish that? Hello, UK. Hello, United Kingdom. Yes, we talked to Simon Brown, who uh, we know. Hello, Gil. Is it Gil? Am I saying that correctly? You write uh, some great questions, and I want to make sure I have it correctly. Give me some hearts, Gil, if I'm saying it correctly. Hello, hello in Kinelon, New Jersey. Hello, Kinelon. I am from North Thing. Uh, we are just, I'm answering questions today. Hello, Winnipeg. So I've, hello, Ontario. Yeah, a couple new hellos. Uh, last week, we talked to Ray's manager and producer of Raymond, Rory Rose Garden. Uh, <laughs> yes, you have, you just finished Deborah's Raymond. You have nothing to look forward to. Well, uh, you can start again. I understand some people have watched it um, hundreds of times, and maybe you'll catch more jokes. That's what, uh, when I've watched it with Ray a couple of times, we, we see jokes that we even, we forgot, even though we've seen it. Hello, waving to a lot of people. Hello, hello, hello. Tom and Polly in UK, or is it, hi, Tom, this is Polly in the UK. Wow, look at all these great, hello, that's a lot of people, yes, great. So did you guys have a chance to see, because I'm going to tell that story, I'm going to answer some questions. Yes, Teresa, hundreds of times, that's great, great, and is there, uh, Yes, I'm great. Hello, everybody. Sorry, I'm reading these comments and saying, uh, watching King of Queens next. That's great. Yes, King of Queens is great. And so the uh, the King of Queens thing now reminds me. So yes, uh, for those that don't know, this is Tom Caldebiano. I am a uh, uh, I was a writer for all nine seasons on the show. I was a producer also, but basically. There's writing producers, and maybe I should just take a, a moment to explain that. Yes, the Jazz Records episode was one of my episodes. So there's a writer, obviously writes, but there's also a, a level that you get in with the Writers Guild, and you escalate through the ranks. And so even though you're writing from day one till day nine, let's say, uh, somebody can be a, a, a staff writer, a story editor. So for those of you at home, when you're watching those credits go by and you go, who are these people and what are their titles? What does that mean? So for, in the writer's world, it's story editor, uh, uh, sorry, staff writer, story editor, I think uh, co-producer, producer, supervising producer, co-executive producer, executive producer. And if you're a writer... You're basically doing the same thing. Your money is just going up. It's not like, okay, now you're the story editor. You're responsible for editing the stories, okay? That's on, on the structure of how Everett's Raymond was. Phil was the king of everything. Um, Robert Smigel, no. I mean, yes, of course I know who he is. Um, hello there. Hello, Jenny. So... Uh, I am, for those of you that are joining us first time, I was a writer for all nine years on the show. Uh, I also took a lot of behind-the-scenes photos unofficially. We used my photos to publish a book called Everybody Loves Raymond. I think I have it within reach, if I can reach it over here. Yes, it's going to be backwards for you guys, but that's the book. Uh, and this is, uh, this is me. I'm not Norman Lear. I'm Tom. It says it's backwards, but... That is my photo, that is my photo, and there is, there's probably 300 photos in there that are mine. Uh, 
And also, I met Ray doing stand-up in New York, and we uh, are uh, very close friends, and as I am with Phil Rosenthal as well, who is the executive producer of Ray. Okay, so I think that clears things up a little bit. So a lot of questions here. Let me throw... So the... the um, <laughs> Las Cruces, Mexico, New Mexico. Great, great. What is your favorite? What is your favorite episode down there? I'm always curious. Uh, so, the uh, when you're doing these Instagram lives, and I have a guest, which is great, and obviously I will continue having guests. Uh, it gets a little bit uh, tough when we're interrupted to answer a question. So I want to answer questions. So this week I'm taking the time to answer questions, and also show to you, let me grab one here also. This is, so this is a script. I know it's backwards, sorry. This is a script from the wardrobe department, okay? And so every single scene from every episode where there's somebody in a wardrobe uh, uh, change, there is a Polaroid photo of those actors. So we're gonna peek inside a few of those scripts which, yes, Ray Burke, one of your favorite episodes. That's great. Yes, and a lot of, so uh, just going back to, uh, we were talking about um, the structure in the show. Uh, you're, as a writer, you're responsible for writing scripts. And sometimes, and this is not a naive question, sometimes people ask, uh, do you just write for one character? And that's never the case. You always write a complete script. So you, if you're really into the characters, I mean, if you really get your headspace into the character, you have to think, okay, how would a 60-something mother of two boys be thinking this moment if it's Marie? So you really do a lot of, you know, uh, uh, searching, and you would do that with any writing job. Get into the character's head. And... Phil, who overlooked everything, he would, you know, if there was something that, that was out of line or any of the other writers, and by out of line, it would be this. If you had somebody writing an outside script, they would often write something that says, oh, that's not really in the character's voice. Like, I can't see Frank saying that, or I can't see Marie saying that. So there is... Um, a certain level of awareness with characters that you have to have to be able to write a script where it makes sense. And for you, as the viewer, you know when you see a movie and you're watching it and all of a sudden you go, I, it doesn't make any sense. And so it's the same way with, uh, you know, a, a sitcom, obviously, like Raymond. And you now have watched the show so many times that you know how the characters act. And you, if there's anything that you go, that would be a little strange, uh, you would notice it now. It, it would really be a, a big uh, red flare. And in the same way that your writing has to have the characters communicate a certain way, you, uh, the wardrobe has to speak to the characters. And so the... And I noticed this when I was taking photos for the book and we were, when I was taking photos, then we were making the book. Um, uh, yes, you have a pen, sorry, you have a pending question that hasn't been answered. Bring it up, bring that pending question to let me know that question. So the wardrobe department has to make sure that you know, okay, Marie would never wear this revealing outfit or Deborah is a mother who's, you know, she's got three kids and she's, so there's a, sp there's a specific way that people have to dress. The other part of wardrobe is there's a continuity. So if you've ever watched a movie and you'll see it on, on our show very seldom, but if you ever watch a movie and you go, oh, wait a minute, that guy was wearing, he, he had a tie on. Now he doesn't have a tie. That's all part of continuity. And you don't notice it unless something goes wrong. So if they're doing a really good job, if wardrobe is doing a really good job, you will never notice any type of thing that's out of line. And they also have to color coordinate everybody so they're all, you know, you have the scene with five characters. It can't be a parade of blue or brown or too many reds, etc. And so 
it seems like a small thing, but when you notice it is in, if you see anybody doing a student film or something that just doesn't quite feel professional, all those elements add up. And that's where that next level, and of course it has to do with money because when people are shooting a student, I'm curious if we have any student film people out there. When you're shooting a student film, you're doing everything. And so, uh, the, the, so by nature, you just don't have the money to have, you don't have a wardrobe department. You don't, you know, you're, you are, your clothes are usually the wardrobe department on a student film. So the, so here is, uh, wardrobe uh, again, it's all backwards. So that says wardrobe. This is a shooting script. It's the script for no fat, which is good because that's a Thanksgiving uh, episode. So in this episode, which, so this is known as a uh, shooting script and it's a numbered script, which means, I know it's backwards, but um, every line is numbered. So we're on show day and it has to be very precise. So here, you can't criticize photography because here's what happens. When you're shooting a show, the wardrobe department has, now keep in mind this is 1996 to 2005. So there was no such thing as a smartphone where you could take a picture. So the wardrobe department would have to walk around and tell the actors, okay, hold still because I'm going to take a picture of you real quickly, a Polaroid picture. Okay, so can we all see that there's patty there's another one of patty and you can see there's notes under each picture so for every scene in every episode of everybody loves raymond there is a polaroid of every actor in every wardrobe change so these and we'll have people from wardrobe unfortunately Right now, I don't think any of them are on Instagram, so it's a little bit, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit tough. But going through these photos is, it's so a, it's nostalgic. But when they're iconic, uh, there is Patty. There's Patty again. So this is this is the again. I know it's backwards. This is the Deborah Page. So this says. Everything that Patty is wearing, the character Deborah, what scene she's in, and so here's, for example, there's Doris Roberts. Okay, so it says a couple of notes that I will have to get interpreted, but basically it'll say, for example, no earrings, or shirt is uh, shirt is open, or very specific notes, you know, no, no glasses. So there's some of Peter Boyle. There's some of, uh, and I'll tell the story. Let me go. Let me scroll through these questions so I don't get too far. Is this interesting to you people? It's, let's see. It's a lot of things. Okay. So let me take a break from wardrobe talk. Uh, did we have any alternates for the endings for the finale? Is that what you're talking about? Or what ends you thought about later that would have been great? Yeah, that the finale episode, Phil really uh, was very adamant about having an episode that could be any episode, but it could only take place for the final episode because we might have Ray, the lead character, die. So the the uh, audience is invested. If you did that in season two. The, the home audience is going, you're not going to kill off Ray Barone because you're in season two. But for the finale, you could have the emotional response of the audience feeling like, you know what? Ray, they could kill off Ray. They don't need him anymore. There, are, there is nothing, there is no, there is no worry about the continuation of the series. So, uh, excellent question, by the way. Why didn't Amy and Robert have kids, Barbara? They ran out of time, really. Uh, to have them, I think, as you know, Phil said they tried to spin off, and there was a little bit of pushback that perhaps it's not the right demographic for a new show, that they're a little bit older, which is 
sad to hear because they were really in their late 30s, early 40s, I'm going to say. At least Amy was. So I think it would have been too much story to build in. And as Ray said in the beginning of the series, um, it's not really about the kids. And so to have, but I think had a spinoff happened, they would have had kids. Uh, I, I, I very much um, don't. Was she holding a baby there? Oh, Miss Carolina 27. I'd have to go back to that photo. Um, you are Nicole. Hello, Nicole. You are in England, right? Am I getting that right? Uh, I'm actually learning continuity in filming at university, so very interesting. Yes, uh, it's a small detail that, and uh, um, one of the things that's a temptation is you have, you have an actress like Patty Heaton, who's very pretty, and she's forced to play a housewife. And, and I don't mean forced, I mean she has to dress appropriately. So even though she's attractive and she could pull off much, um, uh, much more complimentary outfits because of her believability as a mother in Long Island with three kids, then uh, she has to not look glamorous. She has to not look like a movie star. And if you people watch what I recommend, I'm paging through these. Uh, if you if you um, if you watch what I recommend, which is Phil's exporting Raymond, you'll see a scene where the wardrobe department in Russia wants to dress up the lead, the woman that's playing the Patricia Heaton part, and Phil is saying to her, "Look, she's she's playing a mother. She's playing a, a haggard mother who wishes she could dress up." And the Russian uh, wardrobe woman is saying. But she is on TV. She should look like a movie star. But Phil's saying, but in this show, she's not a movie star. She's a haggard wife. So, uh, yeah, is this the picture? Uh, let's see. What is she, what is she holding? Uh, it's, not a, it's, I, it's hard to tell. It's very hard to tell. Um, it, it does look like a baby's head. But I almost, I'm sure it's not. Um, okay. Scrolling through... That, yes, he was, but a bum. Job for Robert. Yes. Um, he didn't have a kid. Yeah, job for Robert to try and have kids. Yeah, so what's the purpose of all these photos? The photos is so they, if there's ever, if they ever have to do a reshoot, and they're doing also these photos during the um, scene, but if you, uh, sorry, during the rehearsal week, if you ever have to do a reshoot, Okay, if something went wrong, they have to match it and go back and be like, okay, what was she wearing in this scene? And also, it makes sure they don't leave out any details. So if you, uh, I'll, pu I'll put up a couple photos. There's pictures of Ray's, um, here, I'm just leafing through because it's hard to go backwards. Here, here, by the way, is, there's little, there's Madeline Sweeten. There's Madeline Sweeten again. And I think I just put up on Instagram the photo. I'm uh, very often I'm talking to Ray about jokes and I'll be standing next to him and then they come in. And here's another little tidbit that uh, if you're in the business, when you set off a flash, so because this was Polaroids back then, because now on your iPhone, you wouldn't necessarily have a, a flash. You have to say, when you take a flash photo on a movie set or a TV set, you have to say flashing. So you'll hear people saying flashing, and what that does is it tells the lighting, the electrical department, hey, somebody's setting off a flash. Because the lighting department, when they see a flash out of the corner of their eye, they're going to be looking around going, did we, did we blow a bulb? They call it a globe. Did, a, did we blow a gull, a globe? And so then when they might be in editing, the editor might go, hey, it looks really dark the next time we did that take and it would be very bad news. So you'll hear people going, uh, yes, love to Peter Boyle, great. Uh, did the actors get to choose their clothes? To some degree, they could pick their clothes if they had a preference. So. When we have, um, we had, the wardrobe department was Simon Took, uh, Ashley Steuer, who's, here is her name. So everybody's script, I know it's backwards. 
Everybody's script has that little piece of paper. So for those of you that went onto eBay and are looking for a script, if it has this white sticker, and I know it's easy to counterfeit, I don't think there's big business in counterfeit white stickers for Evers Raymond scripts. But if you're looking at a script and it has that white piece of paper and somebody's name on it, chances are uh, it did come directly from the show. Um, have any of the actors, yeah, taken something that they've worn in the show home because they liked it so much? Absolutely. And it happens much more in movies because the movie's wrapped and now, you know, there, if you live in Hollywood, for example, uh, there, is, there are a couple stores. There's one that maybe it's still around called That's a Wrap. And it's all wardrobe from movies. So I remember there was a movie, I want to say it was Grumpy Old Men or something like that with Walter Matthau and Jack Lemmon a long time ago. And all of a sudden, when that movie ended, and when the, they, the last shot of the movie, they'll say That's a Wrap, uh, when that movie ended, if you went into that store, you would see 70 tuxedos because the tuxedos from the extras and all that stuff gets sold off. So on Raymond, because you would have recurring characters, I mean, uh, re, re, you know, it's a um, recurring episodes, they couldn't really take home the wardrobe that might be used next week. But I'm sure if Patty or Doris or anybody was like, I love this shirt, can I have it? Can I happen to? Can I have this shirt? I'm sure it could happen. Yeah. Um, who came up with the part of Ray's testicle? Who is asking that? Joe. Hello, Joe. Good question. Joe is a big fan. Joe, Joe, Joe watches closely. That, I think, is based on real life. That is a great... That question has never been asked before, and hopefully it'll never be asked again. Uh, yeah, that, I think, is... You know, yes, thought to Amy Robbie having a baby, yes. Always thought the uh, conveyor belt opening credits for season one was very creative. Were the writers involved or did Ray come up with the idea? Uh, I believe that was Phil Rosenthal came up with that idea for the um, conveyor belt in the beginning. Yes, Phil's idea. Great question. Um, announcement at the table as the finale is ending. Um, what does, uh, hmm, did the show end because the great Peter Boyle died? No, the show ended, uh, a year before Peter died. The show ended for a few reasons. One, uh, Phil and Ray felt like we are kind of out of really great stories. And for those of you that are watching, obviously you're fans, um, the show was good until the end, and there are some sitcoms that kind of go downhill towards the end. And so Phil and Ray never wanted to hear, oh, was that the, oh yeah, that season, that wasn't so good. And so that was one reason. And then uh, being Phil and Ray going, okay, we've tried. And if you notice, season nine only had 16 episodes, and that was for that reason. Uh, but Peter's health was declining and we didn't really know we didn't know what it was it was not known to us but it was specifically but we could tell if you notice in the later episodes peter boyle's sitting down a lot uh during the episodes and he you know he's in his chair and delivering his lines and i have to say he never his timing was great until the end even though you could tell that he was struggling with you know some of the lines here, by the way, just to show, here's just a picture of Ray's shoes by the bed. So they know where Ray's shoes were by the bed and also what he was wearing. It's a little bit, the script, I'm going to have to be double jointed to show it, but there you go. Uh, so uh, there's, and here's Patty again. This is, this is the Halloween episode. You might recognize Patty. And there's Patty up front. Yeah, there's Patty looking adorable in that. I forget, was she a flight attendant? You guys can help me out. Was she a flight attendant in the, in the, um, the, that Halloween episode? The Halloween candy one where Frank hands out condoms. Um, and this here uh, is also a picture of the, of the twins. 
That's a great shot. There's Maddie. What a great shot of the twin boys. Okay. Did any of the cast wear wigs? No, except for on the flashback episodes. Uh, but she did when she went out. And of course, PTNA. Yes. Patty could get dressed up for going out. Yeah. Um, did they wear their own wedding rings or wardrobe rings? I, I, so I'm 90% sure Ray wore his own ring, his own wedding ring. I don't know about Patty. And I saw a note in there about in the wardrobe um, scripts about very specifics. Uh, about very specifics of Patty's um, referring to her earrings and her ring. So when Patty comes on, I will ask her if she were. That's a really great question. Did they? Because I think Ray, so we did Ray's ring once. We did an episode called Ray's Ring. And so Ray Romano in real life would take off his ring and spin it and see how many times it would spin. And he lost his wedding ring a few times in real life. And one time, one of our production workers found the ring, found Ray's ring. And I want to say it was in the grassy area. If anybody's watched Gilmore Girls, it's... The Warner Brothers has a gazebo, and in this grassy area of the gazebo, one of our production people just spotted Ray's ring there. It was a very, uh, I'll have to ask when she's on, Amy. Um, let me see. Yes, <laughs> that's a very specific question. Uh, the kitchen cupboards had no glass. Yes, to, uh, to keep reflection. That is really good. Uh, did Ray and I ever change or improvise a line or joke uh, as filming was happening? Ye yes, but not. Um, it was kind of a known thing. And I think I've explained this before as far as not. That's a great question. There are so many things dependent on saying the correct line. So the camera has to move on the correct uh, line cue. The switcher who is pushing the right image to the crowd has to hear the correct line. The other actor has to hear the correct So, so many things are dependent on the actor saying their precise lines. And like I said, the, these are, some of these scripts are, are um, numbered scripts. So they don't go, when there's, a, when there's a hold in front of the live audience, they don't go, oh, go from Ray saying, what is that? They go, line 17. And so everyone's like, line 17, boom, the, 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 the cameras go back to their position. The switcher goes back to the right uh, position. The actors know. The, the Elizabeth Herring, who we have, knows line 17. There's no gray area. So when you're changing lines, you better be sure that it's just a joke that can come. I know it sounds very constrained, but it keeps everything uh, on the rail. So, so the time to ad lib would be Ray has a joke. Nobody's saying anything after it, or it's not tied to any information that's in his joke line. Then Ray would ad lib. Or if you, if a line didn't get a laugh in front of the live audience, if you thought of something, you could run to Ray and he would try a new line. Um, let's say, okay, what happened to Leo? Yeah, Leo, I don't know whether he had other, you know, there wasn't that much call. And then for, for, Leo, I don't know, is the, is the answer. I do know that Bernie, who became Ray's friend, who was married to Maggie Wheeler, uh, uh, Linda, uh, Maggie was up for the Deborah part, and, and Tom McGowan, who played Bernie, is a friend of Phil's who's uh, um, a Broadway actor, an uh, uh, Emmy-nominated actor and uh, killer actor. So, yes, Barbara, Peter did not look well towards the end. Uh, Yes, uh, improv. I love this. I love being able to answer questions. Uh, yes, the wardrobe department was amazing. I don't know of any inconsistencies. And you'll see in the picture, you'll see a note that it says, you know, two buttons undone for Ray's shirt. So uh, there's, yeah, let me see. Harriet Lichterman, yes, a favorite. Yes, Peter was Frankenstein. The picture is in there of him and Frankenstein and young Frankenstein. Um, thank you for asking the question. I believe it's Abby. Okay, so let me scroll back up here. Awesome. 
Awesome. They did well, yes. Um, true, true. Uh, did you think the episode of Robert Ditcher would be on TV in today's climate? Uh, I don't know. Who knows in today's climate? It's a really good question. What, uh, I think it's a dangerous time of people getting offended by everything and losing their sense of humor. So, uh, um, and there's, you know, obviously there's important concerns. Uh, Kevin James was a random friend at the beginning of Raymond, then became Doug Heffernan. All right. Yes. Excellent question. King me 57. So Kevin James, one of the funnier people on the planet who enjoys, give me some, give me some hearts. If you like Kevin James or King of Queens, I, uh, so, uh, Kevin James was a stand-up comedian in Long Island. He met Ray in New York doing stand-up. One year before Evers Raymond, they were stuck in a hotel uh, um, during pilot season. So pilot season, you come out to Los Angeles, unless you live here, and all the shows are cast in, in about a one-month period. It's a very hard way to do something, but that's how they do it. So everybody's life changes between, let's just say for argument's sake, um, um, February and March, everybody gets cast in that time. That's why if you watch the backstory of Friends or the backstory of many shows, she wasn't available. You know, Jennifer Anson, she had a first, we're in second commitment place to another thing. So Kevin and Ray were in a hotel room in the springtime going out for parts and they bonded just, sorry, they they share the same hotel, not the same hotel room, but they bonded, they knew each other from stand-up. And then when, when Ray got the show, Kevin was trying to get a development deal. And he, Kevin actually lived in, Ray and I shared an apartment for the first season of, of Raymond. Kevin would crash with us. As a matter of fact, somewhere, if somebody can find it, I took a picture of, Ray, of Kevin sound asleep in the living room and Ray sound asleep, both watching TV. Uh, Kevin's on the floor, Ray's on the couch or something, both. And Ray held that photo up on David Letterman. And he said, Dave, this is one hour of primetime television. So the first year of Raymond, Kevin was trying to get a show developed. In that time, Ray tried to get him onto Everybody's Raymond. So he did these small guest appearances. Then uh, Ray, Kevin, and I wrote a script together for Everybody Loves Raymond called Golf. I'm trying to remember. There's two episodes, and I wrote uh, on both of them. Golf and golf for it. So golf, uh, one was where they were all in a car for the entire episode, and they're arguing who's going to get Marie. The other one is where Ray's doctor, Dr. Sundrum, says that Ray should play golf. Okay, so Kevin wrote the one where Ray should play golf with me and uh, Ray. Then Kevin got cast in a show called King of Queens. So that was a show that was looking for someone to play the lead. Kevin became the lead of that show. That show wound up on CBS. Kevin became a big star on CBS, on King of Queens. And then he would do crossovers after on Evros Raymond and Ray, obviously the same thing. So there you go. I hope that answers that question. That's a lot of information. Whatever happened to Marie's sculpture, I saw in the picture with Doris Roberts in her home. But after the auction of her property, I never saw it listed. I'd spend some cash for it. Yes, okay. So there were two of those. I'll post a picture. I'm standing next to it in one of them. Uh, I don't know. I don't know whether Doris's son has it, and I don't know what happened to the other one. My guess is that Donna Stamps, who did set, did she do the props? I mean, she didn't do the props. Uh, uh, Rhonda Robinson did the props, but I think Donna has it. But I'll find out. That's a really good question and a, and a really iconic thing. And I thought if we made miniature ones of those, would people buy them as gifts? Um... Yes. Did two characters play Father Hubley, who was a priest in season one? Uh, it wasn't, I don't think, so yes, there were two priests. And Charles Durning, once he was cast, that was it, because Charles Durning was phenomenal. 
I don't know that the father was the father. Now I'm asking you, was the father in season one called Father Hubley? I don't know. Uh, Barbara, you just saw Bernie on a Hallmark movie. Yes, Tom McGowan works a lot. And Tom McGowan is stupendously talented. And he went to college with Phil at Hofstra University. Who came up with the idea of AIS? So that script, which is called Lateness, I think, the idea for that script was Steve Scrovan, who was talking about having fights with his wife about being late. And her waiting on her. And when he brought that up in the writer's room, everyone had a story. Either someone was always late or someone was always waiting for someone. But it was a very polarizing argument, which was what you want for drama. Aaron Shore said that somebody knew in his childhood uh, used to say that AIS. Well, I thought we asked Aaron about it. Uh, I, I don't remember, but we'll ask them. Um, Tom, that's me. Uh, again, for those just joining, I'm Tom Coltabiano, and I was a writer on all nine seasons of Raymond, and we are answering as many questions as we can in this session. Jenny, Tom, what episodes were you in? Uh, I was in uh, the uh, Captain Nemo episode, Recovering Pessimist episode, and I'm, I'm because I had to take pictures for Robert's wedding, I'm in the I think I'm in the back. I mean, I know I'm in the back. I think it's Robert's wedding. I'm playing a photographer because Phil said, can you take pictures? And we'll use that as the end of the episode. Yeah. Uh, my all-time favorite episode. Yeah, that's a tough one. I loved I loved. She's the One. Um, I loved... I mean, there, there are just so many good ones. It's... As I'm sure you as fans know, you see a clip and you're like, oh yeah, that's a great episode. No, that's a great episode. So it's a good problem to have. But she's the one where the woman eats the fly. Uh, that was just, you know, that, that, because that was so out of left field and based on real life, uh, I thought that was great. Uh, was Ray and Deborah's bed comfortable? Interesting. Uh, somewhere, how many times did I lay on that bed? It, it was a good bed. Yes, I'm going to say yes, it was comfortable. You know what? That's a great question. Never been asked before. This is awesome. Uh, I'll ask Patty or Ray when they join. Deborah's parents were perfectly cast. Were they the first choices? As far as I know, yes. I know Phil, uh, we'll ask Phil. That's a good, let me make a note of that to ask Phil if they were the, so as far as I know, yes, because there was no disappointment in the room uh, expressed, as I remember, about not being able to get somebody. Um, yes, the Robert State episode uh, where Robert goes to the club and dances. Yeah, that was uh, that was great. And I think the reason that, I mean, it's just funny overall, but Brad Garrett's dancing is so good and it, it f infused it with such energy and just Brad Garrett... Uh, I don't know if any of you caught the table read, the kind of reunion table read for the Multiple Myeloma Foundation. Uh, that was phenomenal. And I bring it up because Brad was so funny. And I saw Ray a few days afterwards. And he was saying, and if you watch that thing, which is free, which is still on the Myeloma uh, website, Ray is laughing so hard at Brad at a few of his lines, not that he's not laughing at Patty's and, you know, but he's, he's not watching it. The scenes with Patty, he's in the scenes with Patty. So it's harder to enjoy the other's performance. Teresa golf for it is in the car. Great. So golf is the one that I wrote with Kevin James and Ray golf for it. I wrote that with Mike Royce and Tucker Cawley. Yeah. Okay. So that's a great one. Uh, Leo, Gianni did play the cable guy in season one before returning as Gianni the friend. True. And that was the same type of situation. So we're looking at it now, 20 years later, Everest Raymond is a big hit. In 1996, it was 105 in the ratings. John Manfrelotti is a stand-up comedian that Ray knows. He wants to help out his friend. He had already been on, I want to say it was Law and Order or something. So John already had real acting jobs and bigger than Everest Raymond. 
And so Ray got him that part just as the cable guy because there weren't many outside parts and it was only a little bit, you know, it was only a little, uh, a little small line. So yeah, great observation. But that's why, because all of a sudden his friend has an acting role on Everest Raymond. And if Everest Raymond got canceled after year one, uh, a, we wouldn't be talking about it, but B, it would just be Ray did a favor for his friend who was a qualified actor. Uh, why was Peter's character somewhat homophobic? I don't know. I don't know that he was. I, I, it's an interesting question, Frank, because I think there's a generational thing and I think he probably would have accepted Robert or anybody else, but uh, maybe there's some old school holdovers, which is interesting because you're looking at a, something now from 25 years ago. So if you look at a sitcom from 50 years ago, uh, you kind of have to look at it within that time. I mean, yes, you can look back at, his, at it historically, but if you start judging it on, okay, this is how, it's, it's very hard to do uh, accurately because um, it's just not the norm. And I think just that I'm now talking to you uh, in the UK and Australia, and this was unheard of 10 years ago, let alone now. So, uh, but that's a good question. Yeah, I don't know that, uh, um, I just think he was old school, for lack of a better thing. The diary episode, yes, that was Jennifer Crittenden, I think, the diary episode. That was a really touching, touching emotional episode. Excellent, Tina. Yes. Okay, Nicole, you corrected yourself. Uh, a word, and I missed your question initially. Was there any thought given to Deborah getting pregnant in the later seasons? No, because it's just another storyline. And we, we had a lot of storyline with Robert getting married and that relationship. And, you know, there's a key episode, thank you notes, I think it was, where Deborah is holding out hope. Please let Amy stand up to Marie. And Marie is so manipulative and pulls her in that Deborah sees her hope. So that kind of arc of here's Amy. How is she going to react with Marie? Is she going to stand up to Marie? That type of thing. So Deborah getting pregnant was, it, it just felt like I think it would have been repeated territory. And I think we would have rather had Amy, you know, uh, pregnant uh, before then. Yes, she ate it, Teresa. That is a line. I think I have a picture of us writing that episode uh, in the thing. Yes. Yeah, she's the one is based on real life. So the, the, just the thing about eating the fly, uh, Ray, Kevin James, and I were trying to think of a movie uh, idea in the off season. And we went into the Raymond writers room. And we sat there for a week and brainstormed and kind of came up with a lot of nothing. Uh, and when I say that, you know, you're thinking, okay, could this work? Could this work? Because a lot of, you know, comedy, a lot of stories are very ephemeral. You have to pull it together and make an idea. But in that session, Ray said, what if, what if you, Kevin, were dating someone and I see her eat a fly? And we thought, that, oh, that's funny. And then nothing happened with it. Then in real life, uh, Ray's brother went on a date with a girl that he met and he went back at her apartment and her entire apartment was filled with snakes. And he was a little bit freaked out as you would. His, her tub was filled with snakes. She had aquariums. He went out the, he went down the fire escape, even though in, in, and in real life, her, her, Ray's brother was a policeman. So he wasn't uh, really afraid of anything except for that woman. So that was all real uh, life and we thought, okay, what is a good instigating uh, incident where it sets it off? And so her eating the fly seemed great, and uh, it just got changed from snakes to frogs. So there you go. Um, that's an intro to, to me. Yes, yes. Hello. I wish I could say your name, Zebe. Uh, did I drop off of the Z? <laughs> Brad Garrett doesn't have a bad scene. Yeah. Did the cast get along well after the set? Um, hello, everybody. Wow, we have a lot of viewers. That's great. Uh, and, and again, if you're just joining, this is Tom called the piano. I was a writer for all nine years. I knew Ray as a stand-up before the show, uh, and I'm very good friends with Ray. T 
to this day, and Phil, as well as most of the people that run on the show, worked on the show. Did the cast get along off set? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we would all go drinking together after each episode, the first year, the second year, the third year, and then when it looked like the show was going to be on the air for a while, and Patty had, I think, two more kids during those first four seasons, three seasons, and Ray got settled in, then we would hang out less afterwards, but uh, we still see each other, uh, the, uh, sorry, the cast still sees each other when they can. Will Brad have you on his podcast? I don't know. I have, I'll, I'll have to uh, ask Brad to have me on his podcast. Would, I, would it make sense for me to talk on his podcast? I haven't listened to a lot of his, but I would love to be on his podcast. Uh, was the kids' real mom ever in any episodes? That's a great question. Who's asking that? Miss Carolina or Carolina. Um, I have a friend whose first name is Caroline, and she makes it clear. It's line, not lit. Uh, I don't know if she was ever in the background. That's a very good question, or in an episode. Very good question. My guess would be, you know, sometimes we really just needed people to be in the background. And I know as a fan, I would think, wow, if I could be in the background of Seinfeld or, or you know, any show, that would be so cool. But there are times when you go, okay... We need some people in this church scene. We need 40 people because they have to get extras. And so they have to, um, they have to get uh, something that literally was called central casting, which I think may be out of business now. Um, uh, yes, Teresa, we often say stories lines could be used today. Yeah. Uh, Ray's nemesis, Peggy. That's also a great question. So Peggy, played by Amy Aquino, was she based on a real-life character? I don't remember any real life character. I'm going to have to find out who wrote. Uh, that's the Cookies Lady. Uh, I'll have to ask. It might be. I got to see who wrote that and remember. But I don't. Re I don't remember a very specific thing. Did the cast have any rituals before tapings? Not really, because the day of taping is a rehearsal and then specific notes. Then everybody goes to a cast and crew lunch, which is a giant. Uh, event, not event, but it's a giant fee, you know, it's a hundred people sitting there eating. Sometimes it would be on an empty stage. So you would walk down the lot on the Warner Brothers lot and there would be the friend stage is 24 and maybe stage 19 is empty. So they set up big tables. Sometimes it would be in the commissary, etc. So there was no, so that happened before the taping and then, you know, the cast would be introduced. So there was no like group huddle uh, uh, with the cast before. If that's what you're asking. Excellent. Excellent. These are all such outstanding questions. The beginning episodes, Ray wore a Hofstra t-shirt and later on a, on a, later on switch. Yes, Barbara. Uh, so Phil went to Hofstra and Ray's brother in real life went to St. John. So I think that's why Ray was going back and forth. So, and as we know, we often wear stuff that we didn't go to. Um, Wendell Poons, Peggy. Yes. Great character. Yeah. And she's great. Amy Aquino, uh, will have her on here. She's phenomenal. Uh, she's soup. I think she might've gone to Yale and Harvard. She's a very smart cookie. Uh, great casting room. Yeah. Amy Aquino. Yeah, yeah. What writer came up with the premise? Yeah. I got a, I don't know off the top of my head, Madam Smuck. The Power of No was a great episode, and How They Met, too. Yeah, so How They Met, yes, two great episodes. Power of No later in the series, a great episode later in the series. Uh, this is a very good question, Wendell Poons. Was there a specific reason the Big Fork and Spoon changed size from season one to season two? So I think that's set decorating, not props. So that's a woman named Donna Stamps. And so, do, by the way, do you have a preference between the big and smaller spoons? I will say uh, I do, but I'll wait till you answer. In the season of the yard sale, Ray and Deborah talk about more kids. True. Uh, which scene in all of Raymond got the loudest pop laughs? Um, which scene? It's tough. That's a tough one. It's a, it's a big competition. I do know at the end of Golf For It, 
there was a standing ovation that we never had before because it was one long scene. But as far as laughs, in early on when Deborah throws ice cream into Ray's lap, that got a huge laugh. And the um, when the car came through the wall, I mean that the audience had no idea that was going to happen, so that got a big reaction. Uh, the girl uh, eating the fly when she eats the fly that's a huge reaction it's not a laugh reaction it's a laugh it's a horror slash laugh um in real life ray has uh Ze i wish i could say your name correctly zebez this usually makes people laugh zebe zebez dragana in real life ray has two brothers why didn't you put the third brother in the show? The second brother, in the, yeah, so the, the, the second of Ray's brother, the third of overall brothers. Um, they thought it would complicate it, Phil thought, okay. So what Ray did as a little bit of a uh, thing for his brother, Ray's policeman brothers named Richard in real life. Ray's other brothers named Robert. So Ray said, we'll base it on my brother, the cop, but we'll name him after my other brother. So it was just, there was no room for another brother. Uh, you are in Croatia at the moment. Oh, nice. Nice. Great, Nicole. You are in Croatia at the moment, but you're doing, yes, great. Uh, good morning, Australia. When Robert tasted the lips, her lips for flavor. Oh, yes, that that's a terrible moment. Uh, the first time Robert... <laughs> kisses the fly lady and makes that face. That was priceless. Um, yes, Tina, happy to answer these questions. Was the sneeze based on real life? Also a good question. Ray is a little bit of a hypochondriac, so I would be curious to know that. I'll have to find out. By the way, uh, the person that watches Ray freaking out over the sneeze uh, was our writer, um, uh, Jeremy Stevens played that, who we sadly lost about a month ago. Uh, yes, hello, Trish. Yes, Jazz Records is an episode I wrote. I'll talk about that next time in detail. That's funny, but you have a friend. Yes, did the turkey that get dropped on the floor get cooked or eaten? Not by me, uh, and I don't think by anybody else. Uh, the, and that's for the, I'll put some pictures of that. I know Patty Heaton just posted one of those pictures. Uh, the part where Patty's slipping, holding the turkey. That's a great, great physical comedy by Patty. Just really priceless, and she nailed it. And that is a very hard thing to do. Um, she, Patty, had it all. Yes, it was a real turkey. Did Anna Romano has, does Anna Romano have any similarity with Deborah? Well, the similarity is that um, a lot of the show is based on real life. And so Ray's father in real life would try and get the goat of, that's an expression here, would try and get to Anna. So if you watch the first episode where, I think it's in the pilot, where uh, Frank changes the outgoing message, that is what happened in real life to to Anna. Ray's real life father changed their outgoing message and it really got to her. So in that she was struggling against crazies that lived across the street, that's absolutely, you know, based on that. Uh, people like the bigger spoons that, so by the way, they're still pretty big spoons. Um, yes. Look at all these comedic answers. When Marie jumped in bed with Ray in the finale. Yeah. A great moment. Angry Family, based on something that happened to Ray. Uh, Anna Romano is in the Angry Family, correct? If you, I've posted a few pictures. Thank you, Teresa. Uh, if you watch the Angry Family, Ray's there. It's Patty, Ray, and then a stranger who's actually Ray's life, real life wife, Anna. And in between takes, Ray's just sitting there and then turns to his wife, his real life wife, and starts making out with her. And Patty just looks, and of course the audience goes, what is going on? So uh, let's see. Here we go. Um, yes, 
I always laugh when Robert makes those funny noises during the funeral episode with Gene Stapleton. Yes, I just found a picture of Gene Stapleton in that wardrobe stuff. All right, the last few questions. I think I should come on more often and just answer questions because uh, maybe it's a stupid question, but do you think the industry can get dark because of the choices people make as the industry actually beginning full of cold people who are driven by money? Hmm. I don't, know what to I don't know if I understand the question because of the choices people make or is it the industry people actually – yeah, I, I'm not sure exactly. Are you saying people are just driven by money and something that's effect? I mean it is a business. So people do have to make money. So there is always this struggle between uh, making pure art and making something that people like. And so you're – you know, it's a, it's a tough one. Uncle Mel was great. Yes, Uncle Mel, yeah. Uh, asking because of the way social media presents it. I'm not sure. I want to answer your question. I'm not sure I know how uh, – specifically the question. Do you have any specific photo which is a favorite from all the ones you've taken on set? Excellent question, Wendell Poons. Then we have to wrap it up. I'm sad. Um, I, there's one that I took in the tuna uh, can opener episode where Ray's jumping up. And he's at the top of his height. That was like the first episode where I thought, okay, that's a great capturing of the moment. Which, if you watch the episode called The Can Opener, they cut from that wide shot to a tight shot. So you don't actually see Ray jumping completely in the air. Um, yeah, the sneezing guy was very funny. Uh, that's where it gets its flavor. Uh, that's where it gets flavor. Yes, great quote there. Who is it? Oh, Teresa, of course. Actor David Preval was in The Sopranos. True. Was he cast as Stefani Dad because he is intimidating? Yes. Madam Schmuck is how I would say it. Yes, Phil saw him in The Sopranos and said, we need a really threatening uh, uh, person so that... You have this thing of like, oh my God, it's the ultimate temptation of Stefania and the price that Robert has to pay is the ultimate intimidating guy. Um, at the end of his dance, he was Larry. Yeah, uh, yes, Ray crying and dancing. That was, yes, Ray, that was very good. How important that was improv for the show and for the characters. So almost zero. So... Almost zero improv -ing. It's a very tight, I think, you know, I'm going to hold on. I don't want to bore you guys with too many details about script writing, but every stage directing, everything uh, is very, very specific. Now, during the week of rehearsal, they all can come up with thoughts. I mean, and, and you know, I don't want to sound like they didn't have ideas, but by the time, uh, because they did, because Brad and Patty, they all, and, and, and Doris and Peter, they all brought a crazy amount of, uh, stuff to it. It's just that by the time you got to the show night, there was no ad living. Um, this is awesome. All right, a few final questions. Um, yes. Hello, Barbara. Yes, I feel. Yes, Barbara is. Where are you, Barbara? Are you in Long Island? No, that's another. Uh, the turkey episode was brilliant. Must have been great to watch in real time. Yes. Now there's, you were talking about the tofu turkey, Mary, because we had a few Thanksgiving episodes. Love the nun episodes and Deb's sister and Ray. Yes, that was a great episode. That was a great episode. Um, all right. So I think I'll see you guys. Let me see if there's any, oh boy, let's see if I'm caught up. Hello, Boston. Yes. Hello, Barbara in Boston. So there's a Barbara in Long Island uh, as well. Ray and I did a lot of stand-up in Boston. Uh, Nicole, yes, yes. Um, all right, great. Yes, David Proval was fantastic. Yes, Nicole, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, um, I'll answer on Sunday. Try and rephrase that because I do want to answer it because we are living in very interesting times. I say. All right, I will see you guys. Uh, oh yes, slipping around the, uh, I slipping around the turkey. Absolutely, that was one of the best. Ones. So, uh, hello, Toronto. So, uh, I will see you guys next Sunday, and I'll let you know if we have a guest, and if not, but this was great, and I will do this more often, uh, because I realize that I don't get a chance to answer any of these. All right, thank you very much, everybody. I will see you next week. 
write your questions, write your comments. I try and get to them all. And if I don't answer, sometimes I know that I'm going to talk about it live because I know somebody asked about silence in comedy and I have to remember to ask that. All right. Have a good Thanksgiving for those of you that celebrate it.